told you that our galaxy was full of thousands and thousands of zombies? Well, it is. Zombie stars, at least. So when a star that's about 10 times bigger than our sun gets to the end of its life, it grows bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually it just has to explode. We call that a supernova. But after it explodes, the stuff that exploded out collapses back into where the core had been to create something we call a neutron star. These are really, really dense objects. And when I say dense, I mean that they weigh as much as one or two times as our sun, but they're only about as big as the city of Vancouver. So they're insanely dense. And these, these really dense objects we call neutron stars are sort of undead. They're not really stars anymore, but they're still jets of radio light pointing out each end of the star. And, as they, and they're rotating around their axis. And as they spin, we see them, and then we don't see them, and we see them, and then we don't see them. So from our perspective, it looks like they're pulsing. So we call it a pulsar. Now, anyone who knows things about zombies will tell you that there are fast zombies and there are slow zombies. Now, there are, this is the same thing for pulsars. There are fast pulsars and there are slow pulsars. All pulsars start out as slow zombies. They spin about once per second. But some pulsars, like the one on the left-hand side of my slide, find something to eat the brains of. They find another object out in space, and they eat its brains, stealing material off that object. And as they steal material from that object, they start spinning faster and faster and faster until they're spinning hundreds of times every second. We call these millisecond pulsars, and they're especially exciting because we can use them to learn a lot about other areas of physics. Now, I've told you that there's a horde of zombies in our galaxy, and you might be hoping that someone's keeping an eye on these zombies. That's where I come in. I work on a project called CHIME, which is monitoring hundreds and hundreds of pulsars every single day. So every, within every 10 days, we see every pulsar in the northern hemisphere. And we make pictures like the one on the right, which from left to right shows you different parts of a single rotation of a pulsar, and from top to bottom shows you what happens as the pulsar passes over top of our telescope, which takes about 15 minutes. This particular one is called B1937 plus 21, and it just so happens to be 228 million years old. And it spins about 650 times per second. By looking at pulsars like B1937 plus 21, we can learn more about pulsars themselves, about the, the space between us and these, these objects, and also about gravity seeing whether or not Einstein was right about how heavy things work in our world. So that's me. I'm Deborah, and I keep you safe from galactic zombies.